The 1960s can be accredited as the decade of change for the 20th century America. At this time, the country went through multiple important issues about civil rights, government, and the environment. Such big change was caused mainly by a backlash of a new generation against the old. The baby boomers born after World War II had finally grew up and with them brought a new look at the world, along with every protest was also a cause. The Vietnam War was actually not met with strong resistance in the beginning. The few who were protesting were leftist people in college and it was for, for a while. It was not until 12 years later, in 1967, did the anti-war ideals hit countrywide thought. At this point, the U.S. was aware that the war had cost $25 billion a year and had brought over 100,000 casualties and forcing tens of thousands more people into the war each month. Colleges then continued the push from the main front of protests while tensions rose and popularity for the Vietnam War decreased enormously. Thousands of demonstrators opposed to the Vietnam War assembled in the nation's capital for a mass protest. For the most part orderly, minor scuffles did occur between the demonstrators and hecklers. By November 15, 1969, America held its largest anti-war protest of an estimated 2 million people in schools, rallies, and seminars around America. The main crowd was in Washington, D.C., with 500,000 protesters all aimed at Nixon and the government. It is known as the Vietnam Moratorium. Akin to other protesters such as in civil rights, playing the background to the mu movement was music. As civil rights had We Shall Overcome, Vietnam protesters had Give Peace a Chance, a song made by John Len Lennon and played by Pete Seeger at the Vietnam Moratorium. Pete Seeger yelled between the lines of the music, Are you listening, Nixon? And Are you listening, Pentagon? Pete Seeger, to this point, was well established in protests for peace and rights as he played music. His arguably most popular song for anti-war was Bring Him Home. If an army invaded this land of mine, bring him home, you find me out on the firing line, bring him home, bring him home, even if they... The song had the easily memorable line that listeners would sing with Seeger, which was part of the song's success. The song tells the government that if you love our soldiers, you should send them home, which juxtaposed the idea of soldiers and stood the point that the soldiers in Vietnam were experiencing terrible conditions. Bring Them Home is like almost all songs Pete Seeger sang, politically charged and folk. He's actually part of the folk revitalization which started back in the 50s. He has also inspired many great singers such as Woody Guthrie, Don McLean, and particularly Bob Dylan. Seeger's style was simple and followed classic folk from years ago. The instrumentation is one person playing the guitar or banjo with lyrics. The lyrics typically told a story, like in Waste Deep in Big Money, or had memorable lines like in Bring Him Home. It was back in 1942, I was a member of a good platoon. We were on maneuvers in Louisiana one night by the light of the moon. Pete Seeger's influence on protests was vital to movements in the 40s to 70s. His music made a soundtrack to be played and sung by crowds, bring power to the protests against the war in Vietnam, but as well in civil rights and environmentalism. It also aided a jumpstart to other future folk-based musicians that ended up making music and protests like Blowing in the Wind by Bob Dylan. But just keep slogging, we'll soon be on dry ground. We were waist deep in the big muddy, the big fool said to push on. 